Live from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, you're watching coverage on NASA television of the final movement of Space Shuttle Atlantis from NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building to its permanent home at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Space Shuttle Atlantis is parked in the Vehicle Assembly Building where it has been for the last few weeks after undergoing a series of modifications and renovations to prepare it for public display. The move from the Vehicle Assembly Building, where you can see Atlantis at this time, will take about 12 hours and will be a 9.8 mile journey through the grounds of Kennedy Space Center. Orbiter Atlantis will be surrounded by a host of shuttle workers and former shuttle workers as it makes the journey. There also will be a couple of stops along the way for a signing ceremony. It's a, uh, a ceremony at which NASA will officially retire Atlantis and provide it to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex for permanent public display. And then later in the day, Atlantis will make its way to Exploration Park for a series of displays and activities open to the public. It'll be about a four to five hour celebration with in the Space Florida Exploration Park, which is a 65 acre display area. And Atlantis will take the center stage for a photo opportunity. Visitors also will have an opportunity to view spaceflight hardware and hear from a number of officials who have been involved in this process, as well as the final crew of Space Shuttle Atlantis, the STS-135 crew. And here we see first motion as Space Shuttle Atlantis begins to back out of the Vehicle Assembly Building. Atlantis is on a 76-wheel orbiter transportation system, so it's not rolling on its own wheels. It will be uh, gently traversing the grounds of Kennedy Space Center. Before this uh, first motion began today, there was a final meeting that involved a number of officials from NASA and the Delaware North Company's Park and Resorts, which is in charge of operating the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, as well as Space Shuttle Weather Officer Kathy Winters. While the weather criteria for moving Atlantis is not nearly as stringent as launching Atlantis was, it was very important to have a, an acceptable weather forecast today in order to uh, ensure that the vehicle was not subjected to rain and that the public and workforce was not subjected to lightning, nor were there uh, expected to be uh, strong winds that could create problems. And so there was a weather briefing this morning and here you can see the uh, pristine skies over the state of Florida and Florida's space coast. It couldn't have been any better. Kathy Winters uh, told the team that uh, the weather is fantastic and good luck. Here you can see the uh, forecast on the left column, the times of day locally from 6 a.m. to 10, and then from 10 to 2 p.m., etc. And you can see that uh, winds are well within the limits of 30 knots that uh, would have been a violation. There is no precipitation called for, no chance of lightning, and the temperatures right now are around 55 degrees in the area. They'll peak today about 76 degrees, and then as the shuttle Atlantis makes its way to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex this evening, about 6 o'clock, the temperatures will begin to uh, fall again, but it uh, is going to be a beautiful day in Central Florida and the Space Coast to watch Space Shuttle Atlantis make its final move from the uh, Vehicle Assembly Building to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex.
the move will be made at about two miles per hour. And so the 9.8 mile journey will take uh, 11 to 12 hours with a couple of stops along the way. There will be a convoy that will be uh, along with Atlantis as it makes its way, consisting of 12 to 14 vehicles. Here at Kennedy, we have uh, upwards of 100 news media who will be following the, the uh, movement of Atlantis. Along the route, there is an expectation that there uh, could be 10 to 12,000 guests in the viewing areas. There also are a number of astronauts, current and former, who uh, will be at the Kennedy Space Center and the visitor complex today and this evening to help celebrate the final journey of Atlantis. Atlantis was the fourth space shuttle vehicle that was built and it launched on its first mission in uh, October of 1985, a mission dedicated to the Department of Defense, STS-51J. The commander of that mission was Carol Bo Bobko, and he is among the uh, participants in the signing ceremony this morning at about 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Also involved in that ceremony, Chris Ferguson, the commander of STS-135, the final flight of Space Shuttle Atlantis. As are all the space shuttles, Atlantis, just over 122 feet long, just over 56 feet high, with a wingspan of 78 feet. The space shuttle is a, an amazing reusable vehicle that launched like a rocket, maneuvered in space delicately and with precision, able to dock with the Mir space station and the International Space Station, deploy satellites, be the base for scientific research. A 30-year span of American human spaceflight history. And when its missions in space were complete, it landed like a glider. Back at Kennedy Space Center at the shuttle landing facility or at Edwards Air Force Base in California. With its mission complete, constructing the International Space Station, the Space Shuttle fleet was retired. Atlantis completed the last Space Shuttle mission, STS-135, the 135th mission, landed on July 21st, 2011. It was the 33rd mission for Atlantis. And the odometer on Atlantis clocked almost 126 million miles. Atlantis spent 307 days in space, orbiting Earth 4,848 times, carried more than 200 crew members into space, docked with the Mir Space Station seven times and with the International Space Station 12 times, and deployed 14 satellites. On April 12, 2011, after the decision was made to retire the space shuttle fleet after it had completed its mission, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden announced the destinations of all of the space shuttles. Space Shuttle Discovery was sent to the Smithsonian Institute's National Air and Space Museum Udvar-Hazy 
Center outside of Washington, D.C. It uh, replaced Space Shuttle Enterprise, which had been on display at the Udvarhazy Center. Enterprise was sent to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City. Space Shuttle Endeavor was sent to the California Science Center in Los Angeles, where just this week a ceremony was held to open their Samuel Ocean Space Shuttle Pavilion so that uh, visitors can view Endeavor. Each of those space shuttles was transferred to the museums that are displaying it. In this case, NASA is retaining ownership of Space Shuttle Atlantis and keeping it home in Florida at the Space Coast here at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex for the public to view. And the beginning of that endeavor is starting today with this movement of Space Shuttle Atlantis from the Vehicle Assembly Building to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. The Visitor Complex has been building a new $100 million permanent home. It's been under construction for some time. In fact, for the uh, last year and a half after the announcement that Atlantis was going to be housed at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, teams have been undertaking a lot of work in preparation for today and ultimately for the final display of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The home for Atlantis is set to open in summer of 2013, next summer.